and good day. Welcome to Attack Power Gaming. Thank you so much for being here today. We're getting back to our delicious Steel Division 2. Oh, I do adore this game. So today we are going to be going over how to use the Maverick income. So this is not a specific what I do in this game that I'm concerned about. What I'm trying to show you here is the tactics and the thought process behind using Maverick income. So when you are playing this 120, 170, 80 phase deployment of your points, what should your mindset be? How should you be looking to push? What should be your goals in each part of this this game? That's what I'm going to be going over today with this game I played here. I'm playing against Insane IJ. I don't know. I was in the quick play ladder. I will say I absolutely loathe this map. This is, uh, I think, Lenina, I think it's called. This is, I this is, I hate this map. It's so not really fair. Uh, you can see Red's got these flags right next to it. The only one that Red can really push to is blue. This, this flag right here. It's just not a very good map. All these flags are so deep. They're so far. It's terrible. But that's beside the point. So... What we're looking at here first, obviously your deployment is extremely important and you want to make sure you're deploying two positions where you actually intend to capture something. So my thought process here was I have my flamers, my close range troops. I'm going to push them up far enough that I actually have a chance of getting this flag. I don't want to go nuts. If I go pushing way into here, they're going to get killed before they ever deploy. So that's not really beneficial. Make sure you're being realistic in how far you deploy your opening troops forward. Here you can see though, I know that the only way he can get in here is to come all the way around this mountain. So there's almost no way he'll actually be able to stop my troops from getting into this forest. And what that'll do is help secure this flag. I'm putting a guy here just so once these guys get killed, which I fully expect they will, and I won't be able to get them reinforcements. I will have this guy to continue to hold this and they'll have to work forward. Now note these are Panzer Grenadiers going in here. These are long range infantry. That th thought process is on purpose so that when infantry come to get this flag, they're sitting in this forest and they can shoot enemy troops from far away. I'm sending in some light recon and such into the town as well. I do have a Panzer IV but it is only going to right here. I'm not sending it deep into the town. That's not where tanks belong. Don't put them in the middle of the town. And for now, I'm just throwing a holding group over here just to make sure this flag doesn't get taken. A little grill here has the nice 2,000 meter range with high explosives, so it should be able to hold off any infantry. The thing with this map is this river basically cuts off any armor from coming, of course, off this way. It would have to come from this way. So it's unlikely I'd run into armor over here, so the best weapons would be high explosives. Let's get right into it. Sorry, dealing with a little bit of a cold, so if, you, if I sound stuffy, I am. So I actually don't have it on neutral here, because then I can't see what I'm doing over here. And I, and I liked any way for you to be able to see where I was and why I was doing what I was doing. He's playing Hartnick. I, I love Hartnick. I wouldn't play it on balance, not these days. I definitely think it's more of a Maverick build, but you can certainly use it on balance. It's not that you can't. So, 1311, my favorite. I have captured this top flag, and look, he has very little stuff coming up here. So, already, and I know from playing this map several times, a lot, that this is often a weak place for people. They don't put enough up here, they just don't expect it. I do see some troops deploying in here, so I immediately kind of unload my flamers. I'm not going to put my flamers in this front house because they don't have the range for them. That's not the point of them. I saw these guys immediately deployed my flamers so they could start doing some damage here and the infantry have come together Let's see I captured this point so it's currently 1410 when playing as Maverick oh I called in a airplane here a Falcon well Hartnick has terrible AA part of this is knowing your opponent's division as well as your own if you know the opponent doesn't have much AA you should be calling in some planes a little earlier to take advantage of the longer this guy flies the more damage and point value he builds up He's calling in an ME109 G6. I already know this because they don't have much in the way of fighters. Oh, it's a G6 R6. It's the heavy version. But it's still not going to be able to catch my Falcon Wolf. Not at that range. I did call in my commander with a with an AA piece here. But unfortunately, this recon autocannon is going to catch me out and kill my, kill my AA. So I got these infantry into the forest. And we can see here that I have successfully grabbed some flags at the beginning. It's extremely important that you establish at least a plus one in phase A. If you don't establish plus one in phase A, there's almost no chance you'll throw it back in phase B. Now, of course, unless you're doing a huge build up and it kind of depends on the map, but for the most part, you want to be getting at least a plus one in phase A. Plus two is obviously ideal, but you need to be taking that early advantage. 
You need to be basically in a winning position by the end of phase B to win with Maverick. Yes, you might be able to hold out five, ten minutes, five to seven minutes into C, but against a solid player, once you're that far in, you're going to lose. So he called in a very early artillery piece here. And it was a 120 millimeter mortar. I'm not a fan of those. They fire too slowly. Yeah, they're solid. They do a lot of damage, but but the faster firing 80 millimeter is just a more solid piece of equipment. As we talked about in our artillery video. Now, unfortunately, as I move these infantry across, my GD Pioneer gets caught out by this VK-901. I'm not actually watching. I had just given them attack moves and moved them. If I had been watching, I would have moved this Sturm group over here to get closer. Let's try to kill that guy. Now, I notice he's letting his plane fly around, so I do finally call in some AA. Now, the thing is here, I actually have a two-point lead at the moment. This just this little bulge. It's not going to last long. Again, my goal at this point is to essentially make sure I hold this 14-10 or 13-11, whatever, this one-point advantage. I really need that, so by the second phase, by phase B, we're at least ticked down to closer to 20 minutes. And then in phase B, of course, I need to push for a two-point advantage badly. I need to have two-point plus at some point. And on this map, it's really difficult because, again, there's just not many flags to grab. But this little two-point, as little as it seems, it does make a, a big difference. Even just a minute of double tick is, it burns a lot of time. It really does. It obviously burns double the amount it would have. You can see that his Reach Jaegers, which are close, close range infantry, have defeated my Flamers. So I'm calling in some Pioneers. I should call in a Panzer Grenadier because he doesn't have a ton of AA infantry. A excuse me, AT infantry. At this point, I have moved my Pioneer, so his strafing runs are kind of useless. So again, my thought process here is I'm, I actually don't feel very good at this moment. I, I'm not in a great place. He's taking a lot of the wind out of my sails. I only have a 10 point. You only have a 10 point bonus in A phase against balance on Maverick. You don't actually have a huge point difference at this point in the game. It's, it's very little. So it's extremely important that you trade well. So I finally caught this VK-901 out with my anti-tank grenade. So it's extremely important that you trade well early. Uh, now, of course, it's kind of redundant to say it's always important that you trade well. You always need to kill more than your opponent kills. But on this Maverick versus Balanced in Phase A, in order to get that advantage, making sure that you have a solid on-map pre on presence is really important, that you've killed more than they have. I've actually taken my Falconworld and, and I'm bombing his mortar. I'm assuming it's the half-track mortar, because I didn't see, before I did not see that it was the normal man team. But that's great, because I know that definitely would have killed it. I called in my own fighter here. I kind of wanted this thing to be dead. And my Falcon with is much stronger than his ME-109. Now here, because of the turning thing, my uh, my little Off-Panzer 38T Actually, he was able to do some damage, and the Panzer IV is able to finish him off, even though it doesn't really have line of sight. Now, unfortunately, he did get... I think he threw, like, three infantry over here. Now, and that's the big thing to realize. When I attack over here, I never expected to hold it. But the fact of the matter is, I drew three squads of actually pretty elite infantry, if I'm not mistaken, over to this location, which means that's three squads less than are in the middle. When you're playing Maverick, or when you're playing a really aggressive deck, it's extremely important that you take advantage of pushing the opponent where they are not. You want to make sure that you're spreading out their points. So I have a ten point, only 10 point advantage, so after 10 minutes, only 100 extra points. And of course, in B, I'm going to have a 35 point advantage, which means at the end of this, I'll have a 450 point advantage, right? So basically, by the time we get to C, I will, be, I will have 550 more points to have deployed onto the board. Which means that I can much more realistically push multiple areas of the map that the balanced player cannot. So it's extremely important that you take advantage of that point differential, not just by plowing it all into one area, but by actually attacking places that forces the opponent to spread their already limited resources out. If you can trade even evenly, the fact is you're going to have 550 points more than your balanced opponent. Now if you're both playing Maverick, then this kind of all goes out the window with equal with equal incomes, you can obviously just play 
for the long game, you can do whatever. I mean, you, you'd still love to win by B because then it's just a grind if you don't. But the fact of the matter is, both you and your opponent will be stuck in the same income bracket either way. I did try to get this Panzer IV away. Unfortunately, this light forest was not enough to cover me up. And he goes down. This is not a great way to use armor, to be honest with you. You can see I've set my armor up quite far away so that it can't get caught out by infantry and it actually gets the first shot most of the time because I can see the opponent with my infantry in the front. I talk about this all the time with tanks. This is not, and the problem with this map is there's not much you can do about it. If you haven't, and truthfully, Panzergross Deutschland, which is what I'm playing, is more of a armor deck in the first place. It's really not an infantry strength deck. It's got good infantry, but it's not plentiful in any way. I do have my mortar. When you're in Maverick, you can definitely take advantage of the fact that you can call in more mortars and support weapons to help support your advantage. You have those excess points. Take advantage of the fact that you can call in a mortar and not be behind on the front line. Your balanced opponent probably does not have that luxury. The fact is he called in a 90 point mortar that is already dead and didn't do much to affect that front line. Try to back up my recon to get out of line of sight. A little too slow though. He was almost out of ammo anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Remember, for your mortars, you can set up multiple targets. So you hold down shift and you press T. T is attack round. And then you just click, 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 and it will line all three of those up. Now be careful, though. Most of the time, after you fire a mortar, if you know your opponent has counter battery stuff, you should definitely shoot. So you pre you'll press T, set up the target, and then hold shift and click somewhere else. So right after his attack, he will immediately move. That's what mortar half tracks are for, for getting out of the way after they fire. Now we can see here we're almost finished with phase A, and I am currently still at that plus one. <laughs> I am sorry about that. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. I have been able to grab this back. My Panzer Grenadiers killed a random infantry squad that pushed out. And for him, this is really tough because I get to sit in this light cover. I can back up and kind of hide anytime I want and continue to exert influence on this flag. And he has to come all the way down this hill, all this open ground. It's just a nasty spot. It's supposed to be his, but it's just, it again, this map is just poorly set up. This flag should probably be on this hill. If all things were fair. My Panzer IV was able to take out his. Now, moving forward only because I have these infantry here to cover against a, uh, infantry AT. It's the only reason I moved him up this far, and I needed to kill that Stug. Got another Panzer IV coming in here to cover off this road. I do know he's kind of light on AT weapons, so that's why I'm calling in some SDK of Z251s. You don't want a ton of these. Uh, why? Because they're slow. It takes a long time for them to get to the front line, and that's not very helpful. Here you can see I did set up a Pack 40 in the road, and remember we talked about when we talked about AT weapons, that if you're not going to put them in cover, they should be on some place that has great line of sight. I did tell my Falcon Wolf to go right after this thing. Because it is a, it's, it's a commendable fighter. It is strong. It's got medium resilience. Unfortunately, his ME410 did catch my tank out. Already smoking, though. And it does go down for my 37 mil. That little burst made the difference. It would not have died otherwise. At this point, you can see I'm applying general pressure here. He's moved this SDK of setup. I had already deployed this Martyr 3 to kind of support this area. Very easy for me to do that. If he really wanted to lock this down, what he probably would have had to do is call a tiger right here, and that would have completely blocked me out from this position. Let's see my artillery, can my mortar continue to come in. This was a tough, not a great place to deploy here for him, because I'm just now very thick. And you can see, this is what you need to do with Maverick. You just load up a spot. I'm pushing in other areas to draw troops away, and then uh, wherever my main attack place is, that's where you really start to build up a critical mass of troops that just can't be stopped. 
each time deploying a little bit extra. So here you can see, I know I have a really critical mass in here. I don't need to keep pouring troops in here at this very second. I already have four extra infantry squads coming in. So what I'm going to do is actually call two in over here to deploy and push over here. It's very unlikely he has the excess points to defend over here as well. What he most likely has is one or two infantry units at most defending this little forest. So what I'm going to do is bring these troops in. I'm going to kind of move my grill. I think I moved my grill up here. Maybe I don't. Oh, I use, I, excuse me, I use my SDK of Z1 as a little support, almost tank. It's really not, but it can certainly suppress infantry. And I'm going to make a little push over here to grab this flag and finally get a plus two. Now, on maps like this, where you don't really have a chance of actually establishing a plus two consistently because the flags are stupid, what you're going to have to do then is essentially just break your opponent. You're going to have to get such an overwhelming presence on the field that they have no chance of catching up before C. Well, I should say before their advantage in C takes over. And we can see here at this point he's kind of just throwing infantry into mine. I've set up a very solid defense and I'm just working my way forward gradually. I still have six minutes of phase B. I'm in a great spot at this point. I know I have traded very well. And now, like I said, I'm pushing in different areas. One thing that's really important, and I think it's kind of obvious when playing Maverick, you have to be aggressive. Not stupidly aggressive. I'm not just throwing troops randomly at whatever target presents itself. It's being aggressive in a way that is basically constant. You need to constantly be pushing somewhere. This was very unlucky. Immediate shooter killed, and then of course there's essentially nothing I can do, and I get an ammo explosion. Ugh. Was I annoyed? Yes, very. So I decided to mortar his Martyr 1 because it's an open top, so the mortars will be very effective at it. He's called it a tiger. This is this was a bad calling. He could have used way more infantry that would have been way more effective. This, while annoying, you can see I had a Panzer Shrek kind of prepared for this. I called it in earlier, but even at this range, my Panzer IV can deal with this Tiger. It won't be super effective, but it certainly can do it. Not the way to use tanks. Don't. I mean heavy tanks. I got this Panzer IV chilling in here. Not the best place for it. I won't deny. Oh, one thing to know. When you put your troops in a church. If you look here, I do not have line of sight on that tiger. But the fact is I actually do. So what happens is this church elevates my troops. And I actually can shoot over this stuff. So the line of sight too is inaccurate when your troops are in a church. So be careful. It's very specifically the church. I don't know if it applies to windmills and stuff. But it, the church is like a special building that actually elevates your troops above. So be very aware of that. That's how I killed that tiger easily. And that's why it shouldn't be in the town in the first place. Still working my attack forward here. And notice again, I'm using the attack move. I'm not just walking. Here I would have might have considered just walking because I really don't want them to stop in the middle. But with the support of the half track, I think it's all right. Called it a Yagpanzer now. Again, not really the thing he needs. I was able to kill a Stug with my Martyr, my Martyr 3. He had no, I don't think he could see it. I think that was the problem. We look here at the angle he was at. Yeah, he was just turning when my Martyr finished him off. And you can see here, I'm just, I, it's just constant pressure. You want to be constantly pressuring your opponent when you're Maverick. You cannot be just leaving, having your troops sit. Yes, are some of my troops sitting? Of course they are. But there's always troops pushing forward. There's always reinforcements coming in to launch another attack. You don't want to give up your whole front line to make a big attack. So like if I just move all these troops forward at once, seems great in the moment. But the fact is if that attack fails, now my whole line, there's no line here. I just lose. And the fact is I have such a point disparity and I'm definitely so far ahead on points right now. And I, I, I know I've traded relatively well that there's no reason for me to make such an aggressive and kind of reckless attack should say reckless again your aggression should be in a pressure sort of way not in a reckless way being aggressive doesn't mean your attacks are stupid and unsupported it just means that they're constant and you're always pushing somewhere oh that's how he killed that what that he does not have line of sight on that oh that's bullcrap 
I was wondering how he killed this thing. I thought he counter battery. I started moving my mortars, but he got a made up line. Oh, oh, no, it didn't reach. That was boogers. Boogers. Anyways. So this is how you need to play Mario. See, I finally have this plus two. The plus two I captured here and here. All right, so obviously this is where the main fighting's going on, but all the while, pushing here, this has been a constant thorn in his side. And now at this point, I know I definitely have it, so I'm just calling in. I'm calling in as much as I possibly can to fill this out. Anytime I run into a stronger infantry unit like this, I'm calling in airplane, and because of my point advantage, I can do this. I would not be calling in airplanes if I was not ahead on the map. This is not the way to fix your problems if you're behind on board. And again, Hartnick AA is terrible, so I'm pretty safe doing this. That is the other difference too. I, I probably wouldn't have been... I called in basically all my, my Falcon Wolves, and I only have three. This is not an air division. It does not have much. But I do have three of these really strong Falcon Wolf bombers. I called in all three because I knew his AA sucked. And that gave me a big advantage. This was a huge pickup here. This is really unfortunate for him. It's 120 points. This is why I strongly suggest using the individual toad 40 point ones because when this dies, it's 120 points just insta dead. It's not worth it. I believe that is an off map. I'm not actually 100% sure. That was happening a while. I'm actually going to really quick go to neutral because I want to see what that was. Oh, yeah, it's this 105 millimeter off map's terrible. That's why I was so confused because it was so lame. I didn't actually know what it was. And you can see here on the neutral view, he doesn't have much left. He's got a couple infantry, nothing that can stop my armor. He's got one Reet Jaeger. Well, I should say right Jaeger, excuse me. Right Jaeger there. The rest of his infantry, no AT at all. So now my, my recon off. Off Panzers. These are great in a town. These do not follow the tank rule. Why? Because they have this auto cannon, super effective against infantry. It, it's recon, so it can see really well. It can see those infantry coming in. He's trying to bring in an anti tank. Panzer Shrek. It's a good call in. Absolutely needs it, but unfortunately, it's not going to last long here. My Falcon was going to catch out his. 109 G6, and here he surrenders and calls it a day because I've just overwhelmed him. So that's how you want to be playing Maverick. You need to be picking up that plus one advantage in point in phase A at least. A plus two is obviously preferred, but you need at least the plus one consistently through A. B, you must be picking up that plus two advantage to pressure your opponent. And from there, you want to use your point advantage to attack around the map. Do not just attack one singular place. Now, if one singular place is going well, sure. I mean, every battle is different. I can't say you should never do it. But the truth is, most of the time, it's it will benefit you greatly to press a different part of the map and force them to split their points up. If you let them concentrate all their points into one singular area, then you're not actually really taking advantage of your point disparity. Uh, you're, you're essentially putting yourself on a bridge. So your numerical advantage is being choked by the fact you're only attacking a single point. So you want to make sure you're attacking other places. Second, you need to make sure you're constantly pressuring your opponent. Do not give them breathing room. Do not sit back and defend. Uh, don't attack recklessly, but you need to be setting up a solid line, making sure they know they can't push through, and then continuously pushing out from that line. Don't give up that line. You need it so that your whole front line doesn't crumble. But you need to be constantly pushing out from that point and attacking different places. That's the way to win with Maverick. That's how you get it done. Thanks for watching, everyone. Consider liking and subscribing for more Steel Division 2 content. Have a great day.